In this video, I'm going to talk about my short-lived but extremely fun and dynamic startup. We provided a beef alternative. We made burgers using insects. Now, before I lose you, insects are eaten by almost a quarter of the people in the world, in Southeast Asia, Latin America, so many places. And during my travels, I had a chance to try some of them and they tasted great. And I also want to take this opportunity to talk about my beef with beef. Almost 60% of all agriculture land in America um, is used for beef production. And uh, it's used to make food that is that goes to cows and not directly to humans. And there's a huge loss uh, in that process. Livestock actually contributes to almost 14% of all greenhouse gas emissions, making them one of the single largest contributor to climate change, way more than all the transport, all cars, trains, planes combined. And so we had insects as an alternative. And it all started with just this basic idea that maybe we can use insects as food instead of cows. But insects look gross, we don't like to see them uh, and definitely not eat them. If, if we find insects in our food, we throw that food away. But think about shrimp, they're insects uh, of the water and we devour them. Uh, nobody likes to see a dead cow, we like to see our food processed, we like to see a steak or a burger. We don't like to, we don't call it fish eggs, we call it caviar. And definitely we don't eat poultry, we eat chicken wings, especially in Buffalo where this startup was based off of. And that's when the idea came about, we should not eat insects in the, in the form that is presented. We can transform them into something we love um, and adore and associated with, and associate with good times burgers and that is what we did and just to give you some more um, context on how great insects are as a source of food in 22 weeks if you have just two insects they can uh, reproduce and create enough biomass to feed the entire population of belgium and the same resources uh, with two cows you can only about only feed about 15 people so uh, the numbers added up in my mind, but we had never actually tried it. And this is when the story actually begins. I'm in University at Buffalo, walking down a corridor when I see this flyer. This flyer was for a 90 second pitch competition. And I've had, I've had this idea in my mind for a while. I, uh, and I was like, okay, let, let me see if I'm crazy or not. And I just signed up and I, uh, I saw that the, uh, the pitch competition was at the same time uh, uh, when I had an exam. So I studied really hard for the exam. I wrote to the uh, organizers that to, and requested them to put me at the end uh, of all speakers. I studied really hard for the exam, uh, finished the exam in half the time, ran to the venue where the pitch was taking place and I gave my pitch and unfortunately I was three seconds overboard there was only one rule that the pitch ha has to be completed in 90 seconds and I think I went to like 93 seconds and I thought I was immediately disqualified uh, my good friend Abdul uh, who it later became uh, a co-founder of the startup was there to cheer me on and we, we looked at each other and we're like, okay, we are all the way here. Might as well get something out of it, right? And so naturally we went to the back of the room where there was hummus and chips and we started stuffing our faces. Since I was the last one, the judges were deliberating for a few, a few minutes to see uh, who to award. And as I went in for a big bite of hummus and chips, they announced that I had won and I had to walk on the stage with a mouse, mouthful of hummus to accept uh, this giant check. But that was that was unreal. I never thought, I actually didn't plan on winning it. I just wanted to see if people will listen and just what will people think. I just wanted to see the reaction. It was just curiosity. I had no intention of actually uh, doing this <laughs> at this point. But now I had uh, $1,500 of seed funding and I decided to use it all to develop this idea further. I contacted many farms that were growing insects and those, especially those were approved 
uh, for growing insects for human consumption. There's not too many of them, but the ones that exist are extremely passionate about what they do and were excited to work with us. Uh, I, I got these huge bags of insects and we got cooking. This was around the time we also got Olivia on board because Abdul and I, we were in, in interested in this and uh, we were excited to cook and try new things, but we didn't know anything about running a business or starting a business. And that's when Olivia comes in because she has a really strong uh, business background and also a passion for eating insects, just like us. Uh, uh, I actually met Olivia through, the, through an environmental club on campus. So I knew that she was already off the mindset of trying to do something about uh, environmental issues facing us and having Olivia in our team uh, uh, we felt prepared to go to the next level we wanted to go for the world challenge challenge competition and to get to that we had to first represent our university and we had to win on the university level first uh, we practiced hard we had our pitch down we at this point uh, this, it had been maybe four or five months since that initial win so we actually had a, a, a burger recipe that was working pretty well for us and so this time on this pitch it was not just an idea we showed up with burgers we had burgers in front of our judges we gave our pitch and the judges loved it and we won some more money, but more importantly, we won a ticket to go to Canada and compete on the world final of the World Challenge Challenge. Now let's skip to Canada. We were in Canada competing with teams from all around the world and with amazing people. They had great ideas and each and every idea uh, had has had the potential of revolutionizing the way we live and the impact we have on the world. Uh, and especially uh, all the ideas were designed to target the 16 uh, UN development goals, sustainable development goals. And we were extremely humbled that we even on that stage, we ended up winning the bronze award. And that really uh, is when we started to feel the snowball effect, even on our way back from Canada. Uh, we, uh, we we were seeing articles go up on the USD website talking about us. I was getting social media messages from friends uh, on, uh, and people wanted just uh, sometimes even strangers who just heard about us and want to try our burgers. And um, one of the ca ca calls we got was from uh, Buffalo Rising and they wanted to work with us to do this. Uh, to do this piece on uh, our startup and our story and how it came about. And uh, that's when uh, we met Luke Coping. Luke Coping uh, is a really good filmmaker and photographer, and he uh, uh, made this really good short film. Uh, I'll put a link to all the things I'm mentioning uh, um, in this video, so you can go and check out and probably have a, a, a sense of reality associated with this story. So do check out the Protein Responsibly video made by Luke Coping. I think it's brilliant. Uh, he also clicked the photograph that I'm using as a reference photo. And this photo shoot was, uh, again, one of those pivotal moments when we had our burgers. So we only got the patty to the photo shoot and they had this food stylist and she took uh, extremely good care in uh, in plating our burger, uh, stacking it up, making it look good. and uh, you know, like the way you see on uh, menu cards of McDonald's and Burger King or fancy restaurants, uh, it, it looked amazing. And that's uh, what the reference photo is. The, the, and she was, I saw her put every little sesame seed in the right place. It was just great to see that this, there is this, your idea, your creation in front of you. But now it's not just you and your friends. It's this group of 10 strangers holding cameras. Someone's holding the light. Uh, someone's doing makeup on us so that when, when we, we look good on camera, when we talk in the video, someone's standing there with a chopstick just frothing the beer for the photo shoot. So there's like a nice layer of foam. And there's this group of people working around essentially what was your brainchild what was your idea and i don't know that was just the, there's this moment that you just feel that everything is real and it's happening and idea to reality that transition oh so good and we also ended up uh, uh, sh showcasing our burgers at the Flutter by Food Festival where lots of people came and they they tried it uh, we got some more feedback we changed the recipes a little bit 
and it became a huge part of my identity up until then i, I would introduce myself as scientist or uh, uh you know or, or an environmental engineer and uh, that's how people knew me but now people were knowing me as the bug burger guy there's this new sense of identity that i um uh, that i had uh for instance uh, i was at uh, a friend's place and my friend's father approaches me and he's like hey Uh, and i think they, he overheard me talking about insects as food and he's like hey i heard about you on the radio i'm like what yeah it's like i was driving uh, the other day and i and i heard about your startup and i heard your name on the radio and i didn't even know people on the radio were talking about us but they were so I went back and checked and i found the piece where they, where they were talking about us and what's happening in buffalo and it was it was amazing and then we were also on this morning news uh channel 4 morning news and we were uh, i was showing them how to make an insect based burger on 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 tv and it's it's one of those channels that uh people usually maybe watch at airports or while they're waiting i don't know what the audience is but they asked us to come and we were happy to go uh we also took these small iterations like small tastings we call those bug bites and the the, the interesting part is that i i ended up missing a class to uh go for this uh, shoot so i had a class that morning and I, i didn't i didn't go for the class i went for the photo shoot instead and later that day uh, or maybe the next day i get an email from that professor uh because he was flying uh the, the day after and he saw me on tv <laughs> so he he put two and two together and probably realized why i missed the class but he was ecstatic about what i was doing he congratulated me and he wasn't upset at all that he missed the class he even gave me a shout out in the following uh in the following class uh and i could tell the whole class about what i was doing it was pretty cool and everybody seemed to be super happy with it uh at at around this point i have to also talk about where the startup was at now and why it didn't end up working out for us in the long term and that was because uh or probably the, uh, and rightfully so we got this, this uh, a big grant uh, to do customer discovery so before investors like to invest uh, in a startup they want to see you you do customer discovery they want to know who will buy your product and how much how often will they buy what are they willing to pay and only then an investor feels comfortable investing in your venture and we were talking to a lot of investors and getting this idea so we there was this time when we were in new york city traveling in lamborghinis we were uh, uh not lamborghinis limousines sorry we were going out around in limousines with other co-founders of really cool startups and they're living uh in like hotel rooms on 25th floor on manhattan and talking to ceos and venture capitalists and this is all like 9 months after i first won that 90 second pitch competitions it was going fast but i quickly learned that to succeed uh, as a business we need venture capital and we need we need investors to invest big money into us to move forward so we did this customer discovery we had focus groups we had interviews and here we were not really marketing our product we were finding out so we didn't even mention that we have this product or about bug burgers we just trying to uh, get a sense of uh what people are willing to buy if they're willing to make a change in their diet and at the end of excruciating two months of interviews we concluded that buffalo new york uh in two th- in tw- in 2019 was not the right place and the time to have our startup maybe a more liberal uh and uh, and people uh, a place where people are more adventurous with food like new york city or san francisco might be better for us but buffalo was not the place so slowly and also it was a time when we were all uh, olivia abdul and i all three of us were graduating and uh, going to different parts of the world and it just didn't make sense to continue it as is so we had to uh, close down our shop but anyway it it was so much fun doing it i learned so much um and i want to say even though it's like me abdul and olivia who sort of are the faces of this startup uh, there were a lot of people in the background who were helping us they gave us immense support and uh, confidence to believe in ourselves 
Uh, I cannot, of course, mention all of them, uh, but some people I do want to mention are uh, Derek, uh, Ryan, and Ryan uh, from uh, the Sustainability Office at University of Buffalo. Uh, Grace, uh, Grace is the one. She's a graphic designer, uh, and she made all of uh, all of the beautiful graphics that you saw in this video. Uh, Hadar from uh, UB Launchpad was an immense support. Zach Schneider from Roos Pierogies had the most valuable advices for us. Uh, Luke Coping, of course, who uh, directed and took the photograph that I'm painting off of. Uh, my housemate, Taylor Brown, uh, she, uh, I just want to thank, thank her for letting me have like 20 kgs of insects in our freezer and cooking insects in our house all the time. And she was super cool about it. She even helped us uh, at some food festivals. Thank you, Taylor. Um, and I want to end this video by really telling what I still like the piece of the startup that still lives in me. And that is the confidence, the knowledge that you can have an idea and you can conceptualize an idea and make it into reality. And if the idea is cool and if you're passionate about it, no matter what it is, you have a chance of being successful. You have a chance to grasp people's attention and get other people in, uh, invested in to your idea ideas to become reality and the rest of my life I am going to live with the confidence and the knowledge from that from the fact that ideas do become reality and this is what I got from this startup and this is what this painting is about and that is the emotion that I felt while painting it ideas to become reality. Hey there, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below and do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. See you next time.